Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, I forgot to film an intro, so I already know what happens. You don't, but a giveaway, good news and bad news. Stay tuned. We have uh, run into a little bit of a snag. It's not really a big problem, but just more delays. So I've been working on trying to get this panel cleaned up. And while I pulled out a bunch of this area, I found more areas where the previous repair tried to go through with the uh, puller, slide hammer, and drilled in and made a giant mess of things. There's some over here, some right down here on the uh, style line. But worse was getting down here and discovering more rust like I've got over on the passenger side. So we go out to AMD Classic Year One, nothing, nothing anytime soon. Went out to JEGS, we found this panel here. Uh, it's a Sherman panel, it's not an AMD panel, so I guess that is what it is. The downside is, when ordering it, it still had a shipping date uh, within the next 24 to 72 hours from the manufacturer. Great. Get an update sometime in late September, maybe November. Anyways, a couple of months from right now, which I'm not really pleased with that answer based on the experience I had trying to find the patch panel for the passenger side. But we went ahead and ordered both driver and passenger rear quarters because I couldn't find the patches anymore. Again, I went looking around on the Facebook because I'm stupid and found a panel or patch. Unfortunately, it was only up to about here. And uh, that gives us this, oh, hello little spider. That gives us still a couple of inches of rust to deal with, and I didn't like that answer. So after more digging around on the internet, looking for patches, came across Wildcat Mopars out in Oregon, and uh, just talked to Vanessa out there, and they have just what I'm looking for. It's gonna be boxed up and put in the mail, and uh, by the time you see this video, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll have it, maybe I won't, but, uh, They've got the part. I saw pictures of it. I talked to a real person. So we'll see if this works and we get the panel. And then at least we can move forward with things on the passenger side and get this buttoned up, get our uh, body worked on up here on the sail panel, get our door on, make sure our gaps are all happy. They should be. Um, but just get moving uh, forward and some more progress done. But in the meantime, I'm going to try not to sit still and wait on parts because I've got parts I can put on. I totally forgot that I've got the fuel system. Yeah, so why not put that on and stop using the one gallon gas tank uh, for my lawnmower that's been hiding up under the hood for you know a year and a half. So we've got our tank, we've got our sending unit, we've got our vent tubes, which the downside is the vent tubes on the old tank were on the side um because all the hoses are right under here so i'll have to deal with that i'm not concerned there um, our filler tube is good i need to clean that out because there's a little bit of crusty rusties in there that won't be a huge issue other than getting a uh, fuel cap which i'm just going to get a cheapo for right now and uh, up here on the roof next to my awesome new delivery of uh, wells lamont gloves you can find those on amazon not sponsored but dang they've got a couple of different styles and i keep four or five pairs of these things around the house, the garage, the shop, just for working on stuff. Anyways, in my box of gas tank goodies, I had the box. We have the ring for the fuel sender. We have another ring for the sending unit that came in the sending unit box. Um, the sending unit is already in there. We have another bag with parts from year one. 
which is a grounding strap between the tank and the metal lines and our rubber grommet to go from the fuel filler neck into the tank, which is pretty awesome. And we have all the rubber uh, foam to go around the tank and the straps, which by the way, there's a whole new strap kit in here too, which I was not expecting. So way to go year one. We've got our rubber padding. And then in another large box, I have all of our fuel line kinked up because that's how they do it. So you don't get a 22 foot long box showing up from the FedEx man, the size of a pop can. So I think what we're gonna do is try and get the fuel tank put in and work our way forward. Uh, I've already gone through and kind of prepped under where the fuel tank goes, put some of that Eastwood uh, rubberized rust, uh, yeah, rust encapsulator uh, on. So we should be good to go there. Now we're not doing a, you know, a complete rotisserie restoration. So I'm not gonna be crawling around, you know, sandblasting scraping all the chunks off the bottom of this frame uh, and chassis we're going to get uh, we're going to get it cleaned up but you know it's not going to be like i said a, a rotisserie restoration uh, driver quality parade quality not uh, not mecham quality but we'll do the best we can with what we've got so i'm going to find something to lay on because i really don't feel like crawling around on the dirt floor and we'll see if we can get this tank hung and uh I've got to go to the store and get some more fuel lines. So I'll do that. We'll come back and uh, yeah, start trying to hang up this new, uh, new tank once I get the old straps out and new straps in and see what we can make happen and salvage out of this video. Well, we're back, it is the next day. Um, yeah, we had, we had some issues. Um, I started taking apart some more of the stuff here. I got the, all the vent uh, lines and stuff out, nothing really to see there. And uh, like I said, we got the fuel sending unit in. We've got the little grommet <clears throat> back here for the filler neck to go into. And uh, I, was, I was out last night working on getting some more of our pasture put together for uh, the big four-legged critters. And bad things happened. Way up there in the corner, I was pounding in pen fence posts and the uh, T-post pounder, that big red two-handled thing, weighs about 30 pounds, somehow got caught on one of the nubs on the post, uh, didn't go down, and when I tried to put all my force on it to hammer stuff in, it tilted off the top of the T-post and landed square on my noodle. Now, I can't really show you the after effects or YouTube would do its magical demonetization thing for me, but let's, uh, let's just be assured it was not a, a pleasant sight. And I had to call the wife to come rescue me from the uh, corner of the field with rags and towels. And I proceeded to lay on the ground for a half hour before I felt like getting up again. So we're here the next day. I have a hat on so you don't see the aftermath of what's under the hat. And going forward, uh, if I'm going to finish those last 15 or 20 T posts, I'm going to bust out my uh, hard hat. Because safety fourth or third or non existent, I guess. So, what I'm going to do is I got some fuel line and a shadow. I got some fuel line for the vent and just a little stub to go from the uh, fuel sending unit to the new fuel line. And I'm going to start working on getting those up in place. I'm going to try and stick you underneath the car here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but it's really not that difficult if you're taking it apart. You're just putting it back together the same way. But we'll try and include you as much as we can. So here we go. Well, just like that, all of a sudden it is dark. There's another storm rolling through and I've got a whole pickup truck full of corn that I've got to get up to the house. There is a long story there. Anyways, I want to try and get these new straps hung for the tank uh, before I'm sh forced up to the house for the evening. And uh, it's not a bad thing to do. It's just a little uh, cumbersome. We can get down here. 
And if you can look under here, back up here, it's kind of tough to see, but there is a hole where the uh, straps go into at an angle. Let's see if I can set you down here and still get a shot of how that goes in. Maybe we can see. So if I take my, take my strap, turn it to the side, slide it in. There we go, comes right down and hangs. <clears throat> and the same thing for the other side. Drop stuff in my eyes, great. That wasn't too bad. <clears throat> now the next thing we have is a tank itself here. And uh, these two in the middle, I believe, are my active holes. These two are blocked. Okay, very, very little passage through here. We do have the same uh, four holes on our uh, vent stack in the trunk. So we can work on getting those in, uh, but we have basically, um, our strapping goes underneath here. Here's the front of the tank actually. So strapping goes underneath, and then there's a blanket that goes across the top here to help um, with any vibrations holding it against the uh, bottom of the trunk. Let's see what's in our little fruit roll up of stuff. Huh. Well, that's not entirely helpful. Okay. So I'm going to check. I've seen some instances where strappings are cut out of here, but middle hole, who knows? So I'm going to go do a little bit of research and figure out what the scoop is with this, since I mean, I've bought this stuff over a year ago. And my guess is by the time I do that, it's going to be pouring outside. So I'm going to get myself up to the garage before I turn out to be a drowned rat. So we'll come back tomorrow the next day or like this for you with a solution on how to get this tank strapped in and hung. Then we can move forward putting on our rubber fuel lines to our vent stack and getting our new uh, metal fuel line run. Um, I don't know that we, we probably need it. We probably should put it on because we have it, right? So let's do that and uh, get it up to the fuel pump and get the fuel pump up to the carburetor and remove that gas tank sitting up, uh, one gallon gas can sitting from underneath the hood. Maybe our fuel sender even works. At least the wire, the fuel sender should work, but maybe the wiring actually works too. So we'll come back after the rain and after I figure out this uh, foam strappy stuff and keep plugging forward. Well, I took a quick look and uh, was not as bad as I thought. I was actually mistaken. The old straps appear to have a little bit of tarry type substance on them. Um, so I guess there's not any of the foam padding that goes between the straps and the gas tank. But on the rubber that I got, there was, there was this little cutout. So I figure, well, let me just cut it in two pieces. And I'll see if I can tuck that up under the, uh, under the tank as well. So we've got our mat in, it's taped in place for right now because it was kind of curling on me and I didn't want to deal with that. So we're just going to take our tank and see if we can hang it up here. We've got our old, uh, our old hanging uh, bolts here, 
go somewhere under here. Right here. There we go. Right in here. If you can get them. Uh, we've got our old uh, hanger bolts. I'll probably end up taking these off again and cleaning them up. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and get them hung. You know, take three. All right, we've got our uh, hanger uh, bolts. I'll probably take them off again and get them cleaned up. Uh, but for now, just to get this thing hung up and in, we're going to put them back in place. Alrighty, I'm gonna grab the tank, crawl onto the car, Mr. Creepy here, and see see how much of a pain this is really gonna be. Well, rolling around in a creeper on a dirt floor isn't very good, but at least I'm not directly on the dirt floor. This is oh, actually kind of comfortable. Oh, I could just take a nap. <sighs> Okay, enough of that. Got our front of the tank. My rubber straps are up there. Good for me. Make sure I can find my nuts for the straps. Ooh, here's a nail that would not do anybody any good in their tires. Look at that. Oops. Yeah, that wouldn't do anybody any good. Oh, where did I put my nuts? I have one. One nut is all I need. Now, hang Mr. Tank up here. Hopefully. You can kind of see where it goes with the strap. Now, if I can get this nut on. Hey, it started, that's good news. Now, where's the other one? It's under my creeper somewhere. I know it. There it is. Okay. Come back, grab our other strap. Well, look at that, the gas tank is at least hanging in the car, so that's a, that's a good start. We got plenty of other stuff to do with all these lines. Make sure my filler neck fits in place. We got my vent lines up here, which snake around uh, over here. Let me show you. If I can crawl under a little more. So, under here, Looking up, we have our vent lines. They're tucked behind the seam here, but those come off, go off to the passenger side, snake around through this little hole here, because there you can see where the vent lines are. We also have our hole up here for our filler neck, which looks to be 
in about the right spot. And then over here, we have our sending unit. And if we can see, here is our old line and our old hose, which looks to almost go back on there just like it's supposed to. So that, uh, that to me is some promising news, which means things are going back mostly where they should, except for this microphone who keeps flopping around. But as I was mentioning, we've got a storm rolling in and I want to get up to the house before uh, that makes things a challenge to get up to the house. Uh, the biggest thing next I want to do is I'll probably bring this with me and clean up the end of the, uh, clean up the end of the filler neck because that had been sitting in the car for many years, I'm sure with moisture, of course. So I want to try and clean this up with a little bit of a file. And if that doesn't work, we'll go, we'll go ahead and replace it. But again, at least looking at the year one site, that's about 80 bucks. That's not a big deal, but it's not available anywhere. And I, I want to hope that we have a lot of these odd vehicle specific parts taken care of in terms of acquiring them. Things like the, the brake conversion kits, those are freely available from Willwood. Um, steering rack, I'm sure that's not going to be a problem to have sent out and rebuilt. Um, but it's just some of these smaller, more tedious parts that are vehicle specific or a certain years of vehicle specific um, and getting replacement parts is becoming a challenge. And it's not just because it's an old Mopar. It's because, well, we know why. Anywho, I'm going to get this uh, filler nut cleaned up. And then uh, once the storm has passed, likely the next day for me, uh, we'll come back and get the uh, fuel lines hooked up to the vents, uh, but for sure get the filler neck in and the line hooked up to the uh, fuel pump so we can go ahead and hopefully turn this thing over. That's my goal in this video. So we'll see if it's actually doable and how long that takes. Well, it's, uh, it's been a few days, probably close to 10 days. I've been down here working in the shop, working on the Challenger. Um, some things have changed in the last few days. One, we no longer have a red BMW in the shop. That is gone. That was sold to a nice family, and uh, it's gone to a good home. Young driver, excited uh, BMW family, so they know about BMW life. Uh, so happy to have that gone, and uh, that covers most of the expenses from our 2015 X5 rebuild. So that also makes the wife happy. Everybody's happy. Also, in working on the Challenger, we've run into some more challenges. Like I mentioned before, that uh, quarter panel is getting all replaced downside it's not going to be here until thanksgiving so hopefully by the time we're stuffing our face with turkey i will have something to be thankful for in terms of the challenger on the passenger side the long sought after rear quarter patch has been found that will be coming up in a upcoming video but a quick shout out to Vanessa and the team at uh, Wildcat Mopars out in Oregon. They had exactly what I was looking for and it showed up. Great. So thanks to them for finding us that uh, patch. We'll be putting that on in the next video for the Challenger and then hopefully it goes back down on all four corners and we can move on to more work on the car because there's still a lot left. Now, let's try and get the silly fuel tank situation figured out, get our lines in and actually get the gas tank or the gas can out from under the hood. Now, where I last left off, we got the tank in just barely hanging in place with the straps and we need to go ahead and get the, uh, get the foam in and make sure that is gonna stay. And that is in and up there, oh, 
I just heard my shorts rip. Anyways, the foam is in, hiding up under there, as you can see it. We have our fuel lines to hook up, our, ru our rubber lines anyways, and our lines back to our vents, which are right over here. We also have our new fuel line up to the front in place. Uh, there is a vent in place under the car right now. We're going to leave that. Uh, our fuel setup right now does not use that, but if we ever change that down the road, um, we at least know where that goes or can reuse that if need be. But for right now, it's disconnected. It wasn't used when it rolled in here and it's not gonna be used now. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, well, you're really not gonna be able to see anything, but let me show you what I'm going to do. So basically, there's the, our fuel line, it's right up here, you can see. That snakes around in the, into the wheel well and along underneath the car the entire way up to the front. You're not really gonna be able to see that very well and I'm not gonna even attempt to bring you under there. If I had a you know concrete floor and a lift, we could just bzzz, lift the car up and we could all see what I'm doing. But you're just gonna have to take my word for it or go look at somebody else's video who actually has a lift because this isn't gonna be terribly pleasant for me. Uh, but the name of the game is we take our uh, vents that are back here somewhere there you are. There's our vents. Uh, we run those lines over here through this little hole here and to our main uh, lines. We have our uh, one vent right here that connects back and goes up to the front of the vehicle. That's the one we're not going to connect up front. Uh, so that's not a big deal. Otherwise, uh, just go ahead and run this new fuel line that's over here snake it around and uh, get that in place. The big issue is going to be uh, A, getting the old line off in one piece, which I don't know if that's gonna happen. Uh, but secondly, we need to untangle this new piece and make it fit without re-kinking or bending the lines um, and damaging them. So that's why I wanna get the old uh, fuel line off first so I have a reference point for installing the new one. So. I'm just gonna quit yapping and get everything that is tough to show you done and come back, hopefully when we're able to get it hooked up under the uh, hood, under the hood, or at least where the hood should be. The actual hood is sitting uh, way over there somewhere behind the pickup. That too needs to get uh, primed and prepped and fixed and whatever, ready for primer, yeah, primer. Um, and still my goal is to get everything here in primer this fall and then spring uh, shoot color um, unless we get farther ahead and get the engine out and back in and we can shoot color over the winter here up in the garage where it is a nice balmy 72 degrees all winter long if I want it to be. So, fuel lines, go. Let me show you quick. Under here there's a couple, three, four mounts along um, channel the frame where there's a bag of goodies I have now collected. Right here, fuel line straps. All bagged up and expertly cataloged for going back on the car. And your uh, fuel line and your vent line go in here and this gets pinched against the uh, frame, bolted down, and there you go. So here we see our old fuel line running along here. And here's the back of the vehicle where it goes into the tank. And here's our new line, all bundled up. And you see we've got a couple of points here, these radiuses. That's where it would uh, unwind and lay flat and follow the contour of the old uh, fuel line. There's one here, bend here, and then one bend down here. Now, if you've been following along and playing at home, you'd be thinking, all right, great, we're gonna put the fuel line in, we're gonna start it up, Without the gas can under the hood, we're gonna drive around, great. Uh, I realized one problem as I was 
taking the fuel line out from the engine bay. Um, we're gonna paint the engine bay still. And it doesn't make sense to put in a fuel line just to disconnect it and uh, <clears throat> bend it out of shape so I've got room to prep and paint that area. So we are not putting in the fuel line today. Uh, instead, I simply just went ahead and tightened up the tank underneath here. So we are all secure. It's going nowhere. And uh, yeah. So maybe we can leave this at another anticlimactic ending and uh, move on to something a little better like getting this patch panel installed in the next video. We're just kind of doing what we can now until we get a chance to get the engine out. I uh, still need to flush the transmission and the uh, torque converter out and then have uh, Darren's buddy come down and just kind of give the engine a once over, make sure we don't need to do anything major uh, or know of anything major before we go ahead and yank it out of the car. Uh, I do have a shop down the road that can do uh, dyno tests and trans work, so if we need to do anything there, I've got a closed source for that. And um, yeah, so we're, we're gonna go back to body work, I think. Um, quarter panel or the patch panel goes in, and then I'm just going to start working on the rest of the, well, stuff on the passenger side. One of these days we'll get the whole car turned gray, but that's not gonna to be today. And it's also not gonna run on fuel from the gas tank today either. So, until the next video, which should be out sooner than this one, uh, Keep working on your projects. Keep doing fun stuff. I don't know, insert catchy tagline here. We'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.